Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about how I went from playing $15 games to playing high stakes poker professionally. So it all started pretty randomly. One of my friends decided that we should play online poker for a job, crazy idea, and that we should go to Thailand to do it. Another crazy idea. For some reason I was like, why not, let's do it. Nothing else to do, might as well play online poker as a professional, even though I had no clue how to play it. So 2011 comes around and me and three other friends moved to Thailand to start to learn how to play this game. Now, we only had a little bit of money, so we started playing $15 Heads Up Sit and Goes, which is a low variance game of poker. Now, we were lucky enough to make money as soon as we started, because if we didn't make money, we'd have been on a flight straight back to England, which would not have been ideal. So, uh, luckily we made a little bit of money. By a little bit, I mean enough to cover our basic living costs, and enough so that we could actually eat and continue to play poker. Now, we worked hard 12 hours every day, studying, learning in this poker environment, there was three of us learning, so we were learning a quick rate. Such a quick rate that we moved to $30 and $60 way quicker than most people would be able to. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing. When I tried to play $60 games, I got crushed. I nearly lost, well, I lost a lot of money, and I had to move back down to 30s before I spent all the money that we had. So there was lots of ups and downs. It wasn't smooth sailing at all, and we were very tight on money in terms of living costs, enough money for food, and week after week it was pretty stressful. So seven months had passed by and we were still in Thailand. We had nothing to show for it money-wise. We learned a lot. We're doing, we're doing pretty high games and doing quite well, but nothing to show for it. One of my friends decided that the lifestyle was not for him and he moved back to England, which left me and a pair of twins who stayed in Thailand. So 2016, uh, sorry, 2012 rolls around and we decided that we're gonna move somewhere else. So we've never heard of Bali before but Bali got recommended, so we moved to Bali, started 2012, and the games we were playing were starting to get a bit dry, there wasn't much money in them, so we were getting a bit worried, going, oh shit, have we picked the wrong game? So after talking to some people, we got recommended to start another format, which is quite similar to ours, also heads up, known as heads up, hyper turbos. Now this game is a very quick format, and it's over like two minutes, so to us, we didn't know much about the game, and it seemed like it was gonna be a lottery, just throw your money in, hope to win. We didn't know it was such a skill-based game. But we heard all professionals were making lots of money at this game and that we should give it a try. So that's what we did. We started out with $100 games and we quickly made some money. So I think we got lucky because we weren't very good at that time. And we used that money to start playing $200 and $300 games. So poker works in a tier system. The better skill you are, the higher you can play and the more money you can make. So we're playing $200, $300 games now. And the regulars there don't like it. So they start giving us some shit, some trouble. Turf wars as we call it. And we started playing those guys and having to battle to earn their respect. It's all a respect game poker. Once you're sure you're at the skill level, people will share with you, which is a lot better. And yeah, we were doing well in the 300s, roughly trying to get established, still battling these guys. And then, unexpectedly, our profits went to zero. Now, I'll put this into context. Basically, the regular players, they have a queuing system. So they'll queue up with each other and they'll wait for a recreational player. So imagine you're on the queue for a supermarket. You're second in the queue, so the first person in the queue is getting saved by the cashier. In our case, this is the recreational player, the fish, the money. So the money's being saved by the cashier. Once they've been saved, they go to the end, they go to the back of the queue, they leave the shop in that case, and the person in second in the queue goes to the front of the queue. So this is how the professionals queue, so they queue with each other and take turns to get the recreational player, because that's where the money's made. So I'm not going into too much detail, but for our instance, the queue, oh, so for this to go smoothly, there's a software, a software that allows this to all run like clockwork and all you need to do is click it and go and the professionals will queue in a virtual queue with each other all day long. Now the problem was, whoa, it's getting bright, I got some shit. Okay, now the problem was, the internet was too slow for us. Too slow that we were missing our space in the queue. Every time we missed our space. So we're getting no money. We couldn't make any money off the recreational players and we had to just play professionals or make no money. So we're like, holy shit, this is bad, really bad. So our profits went to zero overnight, and we decided then this is not good enough, we need to get out of Asia. So what we did was we opened up a map, and we just looked at all the places on the map, and we decided we wanted to live somewhere coastal. So we circled all the coastal places, which our options were Romania, which we thought probably too cheap and a bit too cold. Then we looked at Malta and Vancouver, we thought it would be too expensive. And then we looked at our final option, Lisbon. And we thought Lisbon's gonna be the best of everything. It'll have very good internet and they've got nice hot summers. Unfortunately, it was going to winter in Europe, so it was less than ideal. So we moved to Lisbon and we lived in a place 30 minutes outside of the main city. And it was in a bit of a residential area. No one spoke the language. 
and we decided to turn the downstairs, massive downstairs basement into an office area. This was a bad, bad mistake. I don't know what it is about a basement, but when you're in a basement all day, every day, it just really gets you down. Well, there's a lack of sun, there's no windows, it was dark and dingy. It was really stressful. We were starting to fight over little things, bickering, arguing over stuff that we didn't argue over, getting loads of fights. And we finally decided that this wasn't gonna work. All we did was play poker 12 to 14 hours a day, go to the gym, and pretty much nothing else. No one spoke English in our area, and we were too lazy to learn Portuguese, so it just wasn't working out very well. We had breaking points, but arguing and fighting too much, and we decided we need to get out of Portugal for our own sanity and move back to England. Lisbon's a very nice place, by the way, if you wanna go on holiday, just don't live in the kind of local village because it's kind of not that good, yeah. So anyway, we decided to move back to England, 2013, and we were established in 300s, making great money, five figures a month, every month, stuff's going good. It's like, yes, we're in the money, stuff's going great. Uh, the boys, the twins, decided that they were gonna move back to Bali because internet over a three year span had improved a lot, and they wanted to move back to Bali because they're missing the sort of Bali lifestyle, which, why, why, why would you not miss this? And yeah, so they moved back to Bali in the end of 2013, and I decided to stay in England with my girlfriend, and we decided mid-20, no, early 2014, that me and my girlfriend, well, I convinced her to go on a three-month holiday to visit the boys, which she was very reluctant to do because she was in between jobs at the time, and she was looking for a, she didn't want a gap on her CV, so I had to do some persuading there to get her to come to Bali with me on the three-month holiday, which she did. And then on that three-month holiday, we decided to agree to a six bedroom villa to live with the twins, a Polish guy and an Australian poker player who we were made good friends with while we were in Bali. So I told her it was a six month rental, it was actually a 12 month agreement that we made, but she was well and truly sold on Bali by this point, so there's no looking back. So we got a year rental from 2014 to mid 2015 roughly in Bali, and from there we decided that we're just gonna keep making money and then we got a bit crazy, so we decided we wanted to play $1,000 heads of sit and goes. I won't go into detail on this one, but we just we thought the guys at the top level were weaker than us, so we decided to put them under pressure, and we created massive controversy in the poker world. Everyone turned on us because they didn't like the way we went about it, and we ended up creating a lot of enemies at high stakes, which resulted in a prolonged battle for eight months playing these guys non-stop, and I pretty much, well, I effectively went broke, but I almost went broke on a number of occasions, technically went broke once, and just kept battling these guys. Eventually, we got accepted by the high stakes guys, and but basically it's a respect game, if you earn respect, you finally get in, but there was a lot of emotions involved, so we didn't. Finally, 20, uh, I think it was 2015, like August time, we got let into 1Ks, the money spot, the highest stakes in our game, $1,000 a game, super cool to be in there. So next two years, I was able to play those games, very high hours, make incredible amounts of money and life-changing money for myself. And then I decided that I wanted to transition out of poker, which I've recently just done, transition out of the playing side of poker, and I'm now coaching poker players on lifestyle and performance coaching, helping them to achieve all their goals and to create the same type of freedom that I've created for myself, which is super cool, super interesting, I love doing this. And now I'm making videos of this nature to hopefully inspire a few people to think a bit differently, think a bit bigger, Think you can create your dream lifestyle. You can do whatever you want with your life. I'm here in Bali, been here for three years. Crazy, beautiful place. No one with logic would have told me this was possible if we played a card game, I could end up in Bali. But it is possible and I want to inspire some people to take action and actually start creating a dream life that they want to live. At the end of the day, you want to live a life that you're happy to tell stories about when you're older and a life you're proud of living. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And so if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. If you're a poker player, definitely subscribe to my channel. There's gonna be loads more stuff coming from me soon. And I'm gonna be doing loads of informative videos, lifestyle related videos, and loads of cool stuff, so please subscribe.